Hi friends, this is Dina and welcome to my new tutorial video where we'll be painting this colorful and simple daisy field. I wanted to paint something detailed and beautiful that still didn't require me to spend hours planning and thinking about the perfect color mixes. I think this whole painting turned out to be a little bit more loose, which I love. This only took me about an hour to paint and if you would like to see the whole real-time painting process, I will have a link down below to my Patreon page where it's uploaded. I also post an exclusive tutorial on Patreon every month with multiple real-time videos and this month we painted this pond painting with raindrops and lily pad as this month's tutorial. All of these extra videos can be found on the painting club tier and on the postcard club tier where you will also get these physical rewards mailed to you if you join this month. Now that all of that is out of the way, finally let's get into the video. As always, I tape the edges of the painting with my MT masking tape. If your tape rips the paper, try to glue it onto the table first to weaken the adhesion. I actually didn't need a sketch of any kind with this painting because I fully painted the background before I started painting the flowers, but I think sometimes a sketch might also teach you a bit more about the process of painting certain objects, or in this case flowers, so I just wanted to quickly sketch two daisies from different angles so you can see what kind of shapes I have in mind when I'm actually painting them later. When I'm drawing daisies I often paint the middle section first and then draw the petals around it, but when I'm painting I actually often do the other way around especially when I'm going for a more loose style like here. I wanted this process to be relaxing and not super intimidating, so I didn't clean my palette at all. It's often my least favorite part about creating and sometimes it just feels too overwhelming, so for this process I often used colors already on my palette and mixed colors on top of existing mixes. I started by adding some more colors on the palette though, just to overall have more paint to work with. I added some fur green and olive green first, but during the whole process I also at some point added some more black, light yellow and some scarlet which is a red color from my medic wash. All of the other colors were from Royal Talents. For my first color for the background, I pretty much used these light green and yellow mixes from my palette and used a lot of water. Overall, for this background, I used this almost watercolor-like consistency and I love gouache and this is a great example of how differently you can use it within just one painting. For the background, I wanted to make a rough blend from this super light yellowish green color in the top to this very dark green color in the bottom so that the field would look like the sun is hitting the part in the top and the bottom of the field is very dark and in the shadow. I think this is the part where you're gonna really see me just using random colors on my palette because for the slightly darker colors I mixed that lightest color and then some olive green together and then I just continued darkening the color when we were getting closer to the bottom of the painting. As you can see, I'm really just blending things together very messily, there are no perfect blends here. You can see a lot of the strokes. I'm going to be covering a lot of that up with the darkest color in the bottom because I felt like the painting overall needed to be a little bit more dark because even if it looks pretty dark at this point when we start adding those details on top, I think that it has to have a big enough contrast for the background to look realistic. So I mixed in some black, olive green and fur green to you create this very dark layer in the bottom and I also dragged that color a little bit onto the top part of the painting just to make it look a little bit more interesting and contrasty. I was using this bigger wash brush from Princeton for this and I love this kind of brush especially for these messy blends but I also do like to use it for those more perfect blends as well but I really like this brush when covering larger areas. As you can see here I'm just blending that darker color to the lighter colors on the the top and I'm just using my brush and a little bit of water to just blend everything together but again I'm not going for any sort of perfect blends here. I think that at this point I was just kind of having this fun freeing process and even though it looks a little bit messy here when we start adding those colors on top I can assure you you cannot really see the messiness underneath anymore. But the next part was starting to add the grass on top. This is again going to be that part that is going to be a little bit less visible when the painting is finished because we are adding so many flowers on top, but this is a very important step. So this step is important to make, but you don't have to make this perfect by any means. I was using that lighter color mix that was on my palette and I was just to that mixing some different green tones and a little bit of black to make this a little bit lighter color than the background 
background so all of these grasses here in the back would just barely show through from the background. For this step I used this Princeton long round brush and I think that this is great because the tip is so sharp that you can make very thin lines but when you are adding a little bit more pressure onto your brush especially when you are making those grass strokes that often are just a tiny bit more thick in the bottom I think that this brush is perfect for that but any brush really works if it has a tip that is not super rounded so you can still make these thinner lines. I think for the long this time I was using these very very thin brushes and even though they do work for these kind of grassy details and oftentimes they work really well and there really is no issue in that I sometimes like to use these brushes that have some sort of thickness in them as well so you can use them in a bit more versatile way and yeah again I really like them especially with these more messy flower field paintings like these. So I was trying to make pretty long strokes paired with some shorter ones and I was kind of painting the grass going to all different directions but especially on the sides I was focusing on them maybe bending into the middle a little bit more so they're not like super messy so I think that um, kind of bending the grasses on the sides a little bit to the middle just makes the painting look a little bit more interesting and maybe your eyes are drawn into the middle a little bit more but I tried to make sure that they are not all just like perfectly straight because I think that that makes it look a little bit more unrealistic. Whenever I'm painting grass I tend to hold my brush in a very relaxed way but I remember when I started I definitely <laughs> had a very stiff hand and I think that's the reason why they often looked a little bit forced or a little bit unnatural so I think that that's also something that your hand will automatically be trained to if you paint more just to you know hold the brush in a more relaxing way so that maybe those brush strokes will also look a little bit more organic but when I was painting the grass when I was done with the layer that's in the back I mixed in some more yellow and white to that previous mix of colors so that I could create another layer of grass that is a little bit more in the front and has a little bit lighter of a color. With this I did pretty much the same as with the previous layer but I tried to make sure that I'm not completely covering the whole bottom area with these grasses because I still want the um, first layer to show through a little bit more so it just has this nice illusion of depth and just a nice variety of colors. As you can see I was also focusing mainly on making those grasses in the bottom of this painting. I was thinking that since the sun is hitting the top part of the field maybe those areas areas are just like pretty light and you cannot really see many of those grassy details there. So yeah, I was mainly focusing on making the grass in the darker areas of this painting. And when that part was done I started painting the flowers and as you can see I unfortunately lost some footage or the file got corrupted or something. I don't really know what happened but I don't have the footage of me painting the first flowers but don't worry I am doing pretty much the same thing throughout this whole painting. So the first step that I did with the flowers, this step that you didn't see was me mixing together some white, some brown and some black to create this light gray color that is just slightly darker than your usual white because these are going to be the daisies that are in the shadow in this flower field. So I think that this step might be something that you can skip if you are just starting and looking at a reference photo, at least that's what I did. I often just skipped making some of the background flowers but I think when I realized that that is an important step I definitely noticed how my paintings just went straight to the next level because I really think that this gives you so much more depth in your paintings if you are also just focusing on some of the flowers in the background. So I'm making these flowers a little bit smaller because they are probably just in the background and maybe a little bit further away from us as the viewer of this scene. So I'm using the same brush as I used for the grass to just make these small little petals. And again, like I said with the sketching part, I am, when I'm painting especially loosely, I'm often making the petals first and then painting the middle section of the flowers. And that's what I did here as well as you can see. So I just made those little rounded petal shapes and then I left the middle section empty so I can just paint the center of the flower later. 
I was kind of jumping from one step to another and I'm going to be painting more of those more in the shadow flowers later but I wanted to add some more bigger flowers on top that have more white in them just so that I can make this look a little bit more interesting. I don't know sometimes I struggle with my paintings like trying to make one step at a time because I kind of want to jump into the more interesting parts at some points because you know making the background and making those like I don't know back layers is not always the most fun step so I wanted to make some more of these white flowers on top as well. So as you can see we are now doing pretty much the same as I did before but we are making the flowers bigger and we are only using white. So these are the flowers on the top and these are getting a little bit more of that natural light so we are just making them a little bit lighter in color. So now the first flowers that we added look a little bit more like they are in the shadow. The contrast isn't that big but I think that you can definitely see it when we actually add that orange pop of color to the middle of the flowers. You can see that those first darker flowers that we added are clearly much darker than the ones that we are making now. And considering this perspective that we are looking at this scene from, I think that it's important to make most of the flowers kind of from the side. So instead of just painting that rounded middle section and those perfectly placed petals all around that middle section, I think that it's important to make them instead from the side a little bit. And I think that if you are confused about how the petals look like, it would be probably beneficial for you to maybe look at some pictures from Google just to see how daisies look like like from the side so you can see which directions the petals normally go for. I have painted daisies a lot so this part kind of comes a little bit more naturally to me now. I'm not trying to say that these are completely realistic flowers or anything but I kind of um, feel more comfortable making these side view flowers now since I've painted this one specific flower so many times. I also did include some flowers that you can see straight from the front that have those equally long petals on each side just to make it a little bit more interesting but again I mostly focused on just like making them look a little bit more flat because that just kind of makes this look a little bit more interesting but at the same time you can do it your way as well so don't let me dictate on how you paint this. Overall, with these kinds of paintings, I think sometimes more is more. I think it just looks so interesting and so fun and a little bit more realistic when we do have a lot of flowers in the back and then a lot of flowers in the front. So it just looks really full and like a actual flower field. I did not paint as many of those flowers in the top. I mainly focused, again, like with the grass, I focused on adding more flowers in the bottom. I don't really even know why, but I think that this just looks really good as it was so I was really happy with that. I did not use any sort of reference photo for this one so I was really just winging it as I went and I think that it just looked really good with the main chunk of flowers being in the bottom. As you can see, especially with the smaller flowers, I'm really just making some random little shapes and just kind of making sure that it looks like a flower, but I'm not making those individual petals perfect by any means. I have done a lot of paintings with daisies and sometimes I like to focus on the petals a little bit more and make them look a little bit more, I guess, realistic and look at reference photos more and just make sure that they look good. But this time I really was just like having fun and painting them so it's not like I try to make them super realistic especially the smaller ones and I think that these kinds of paintings are great practice if you want to paint some flowers but you don't want to spend a lot of time on them because painting flowers can take a lot of time especially if you are trying to make petals look realistic. They are very complicated most of the time and especially with white flowers if you are like wanting to add a lot of shadows and you want to just make them perfect and realistic it it will take you a lot of time so I think this was a fun practice of just kind of letting it be loose and not focusing on the tiniest details as much. But now that my flowers are all done, I'm going to be painting the center of the flowers. So I'm mixing some yellow and red. I think I mostly used a color that was already on my palette, this very random orange color. And I mixed a little bit more yellow into it to paint the center of those flowers that are on the top. But then I mixed in a little bit more red when I was working on the flowers in the bottom just to make that orange pop a little bit more. 
So with this I did the same thing as I did with the flowers itself. So those flowers that I used a lot of white for that are very very light in color, I used a little bit more of this yellowish orange color, but those flowers that are in the back, those ones that are a little bit more gray, I used more red and also a little bit of black to make the center a little bit darker as well. And I think that this is also going to help a little bit more on making that contrast from that super light white daisy on top and that more grayish daisy in the back. I was really just going through all of the flowers, adding that little dot of orange in the middle of them. Did not make anything perfect again, and it was just a nice little step of kind of pulling this whole painting together without really doing that much, because I really think that obviously without this orange, this painting just isn't whole. So it was so much fun just to add this little, the little dot of color and just making this whole painting just come alive. But throughout this whole painting process of me just adding those flowers on top of each other, I really tried to remind myself to indeed add them on top of each other because I think the natural instinct when you're painting something like this is just to add flowers on the spots where you don't have them yet. And then you kind of have this flower field of just having a few flowers in each area without having them overlap at all. So I think that I tried to make sure, even though it's kind of like a messy process to do this, I tried to make sure that there was a lot of flowers just kind of on top of each other and that again is going to make it look more interesting and just make that illusion of depth be there just a little bit more. Since I wanted the orange color to be just a tiny bit more detailed, I added some more yellow and white to that orange mix and just added a bit of a highlight to all of the lighter colored orange centers of the flowers. I think that I always, when I talk about flowers, I always say center or a middle part of the flower, but I forget to check what the actual name of that is, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and even though this step was really simple and in paper didn't really do much i think that it still makes this whole painting look just a tiny bit better and i think that you know it just makes it a little bit more dimensional to add some more shades to the flowers because you know the white areas are so simple after i had added that little highlights onto the orange parts i also added some shadows and i think that this is again a small step but this really does bring the painting together i think that this is exactly what this painting needed because at the end of the day i was talking talking about the background and it needing a little bit more contrast, I think that now that this painting is at this stage, I still feel like it turned out to be a little bit lighter than I thought. And that's often an issue for me when I'm painting because I'm like, yeah, this looks very dark, but when I'm adding more things on top, I'm like, I could have gone even further. So now we are mixing together some red and black just to make this very intricate little shadow onto the middle section of the flower. So I'm using a smaller brush now now just to make this tiny little line onto the bottom of the center of the flower just to make it pop a little bit more and make it look like there's actually something going on. It's not just a random blob of color anymore. Now there is actually dimension and there is some depth to this part of the flower as well. Overall, I think daisies are such a good beginner flower to paint and I guess even a little bit more than a beginner flower because I'm still painting them every chance I get. I've noticed that I have literally painted daisies in so many of my sketchbook paintings, like even paintings that don't really have anything to do with flowers, I manage to always add in daisies. And I think it's, it's my trademark now and I love them so much, so it makes sense. I also still added the tiniest little highlight onto the top of the middle section of the flower by just adding this bright white little pop of color there. And then I also added some white onto some of the petals that were more in the shadow just to kind of add this little white highlight onto the top of some of them. And like I've said already, I did not want to spend too much time making the petals detailed or anything. I still took some of that darker flower color that we added here first and added some of that to the roots of some of the lighter flower petals just to 
add this tiny little shadow onto the flowers. It's not much and I don't really know if it did much overall but I really just wanted to add the tiniest bit of color difference in some of the petals so that they would just pop a little bit more with that bright white. And as one of the last details for this whole painting, I also wanted to add some shadow to those flowers that were in the back that we added first. So I mixed together some red and black to make this dark brown color to add to the bottom of the middle section of those first flowers like we did just previously with the flowers on top. And this was just me basically dabbing a random <laughs> brown colored, almost like a dot to some of these areas just to make them pop from the back background a little bit more and I think that again this really makes it look like those flowers are in the back a little bit more because the color difference between the white and the light gray color is not huge. But that is pretty much it with this painting. After I took off the tapes, I really still wanted to add the last detail in, so I mixed in some very light orange color just to add a little pop of this very warm yellowish color onto some of the petals of the flowers. I mainly added this just to some of the few bigger flowers just to make them look like maybe the sun was setting because we had such a harsh yellow light in the top of this painting. So just added that tiny little detail and then we are finished with this painting. I really hope that you enjoyed watching this video. Again, if you wanna see the real-time painting video, it is up on my Patreon, which is linked below. Hopefully this was fun to follow and maybe if you recreated this, you had fun most importantly. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel, leave a like and leave a flower emoji down in the comments so I know you watched until the end. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye.